call it range ambiguity. Range ambiguity means that you are not sure what area of Doppler you are measuring. Example, if you have two arteries and you get the Doppler, you don't know if the first of the second artery that you are measuring. This is the problem of continuous Doppler. In pulsed Doppler, there are only one crystal, one crystal produces the ultrasound in transmission and in reception the same crystal takes the echo back. The sonographer in pulsed Doppler put the gate exactly in the artery that they want to measure and that means that we know where are measuring. This is called range resolution. Remember, for continuous Doppler is range ambiguity, for pulsed Doppler is range resolution. You know where are you measuring. This is range resolution. You have two arteries, but you know that you are measuring only one artery. Of the contrary, this is range ambiguity. In continuous Doppler, you don't know exactly where are you measuring. Range resolution, you know where is the gate. Pulsed Doppler principal advantage is the range resolution. But the pulsed Doppler disadvantage is the artifact called aliasing. This is when velocities are too high, the machine put the velocities in negative. High velocities appear negative. This is called aliasing and is the most common artifact of pulsed Doppler. Can you determine where the well is rotating, not same for the clock, same contrary of the clock, because this is called aliasing. You cannot determine the direction of the well. That is the same that happens with pulsed ultrasound. This direction or this direction you don't know both direction are possible for this. When Doppler shift exceed a value, the Nyquist limit velocities are perceived as going in the opposite direction. This is the Nyquist limit. The Nyquist limit is equal to the half of the pulse repetition frequency and remember you can change the pulse repetition frequency when you change the dip that you are working. You can change the Nyquist limit if you working more superficial. Nyquist limit is equal the pulse repetition frequency that is hertz divided by 2. Remember, pulse at one crystal, continuous wave, two crystal. Pulse at range resolution, continuous wave, range ambiguity. Pulse at limit on maximum velocity, continuous no limited in maximum velocity. And the pulse at half the Nyquist number that mean that produce aliasing. To make diagnosis of arterial obstruction, in other words of arterial stenosis, the first thing that the doctor is going to see is the increment in the velocity in the stenotic zone. More than 125 centimeters by second means that there are some stenosis. The post-stenotic flow is turbulent. This is other form to make diagnosis. 
there are also proximal pulsatile change and there are also indirect effects of the obstruction that means that sometimes there are more dilatation of the arterioles because there are no enough flow but the most important are the number one and the number two the ten stenosis or stenotic is the area of narrow in the artery the stenotic some measure commonly used are the most important the systolic velocity with in the stenosis more than 125 centimeter by second is the beginning of stenosis the end diastolic velocity also is important and complement the diagnostic and other is the relation between the velocities in the area of stenosis with the velocity in areas where no stenosis are that means to compare internal carotid artery with common carotid artery when the ratio is more than three is other aspect that can help to diagnosis arterial stenosis this is in the superior area a laminar flow and if there are stenosis a plague after the stenosis there are turbulent flow but more than this you have a high velocity in the area of the stenosis because there are the same quantity of blood passing but the area is less same blood less area mean more velocity systolic velocity within the stenosis three five zero centimeters by second there are stenosis in the area and diastolic are also high 116 centimeter by second normally diastolic velocity is like 20 not as high as 116 there are color doppler show the stenotic area but also you can see a change in the color this is aliasing color doppler also have aliasing when the blood velocity is too high the machine put the color contrary stenotic zone velocity is directly proportional to the severity of the luminal narrowing of course you give the doctor the velocity in the stenotic area and that is how the doctor make diagnosis of stenosis and also how, how much stenosis there are and the systolic velocity ratio is the relation between the velocity in the area of stenosis with the velocity in the common carotid artery also the flow is turbulent in the post stenotic zone because there are turbulent zones if you see the spectral doppler you see that you have also negative velocity and in the color doppler you see different color mixes that means that there are turbulent flow after the stenotic area stenosis with the aliasing and the post stenotic turbulence